things correct. I am no longer doing a bandwidth test, and we should be ready to go. So um, let's go ahead and bring up the main monitor here. Of course, the trusty generic Kali uh, running um, the B-Sides Edinburgh uh, CTF by Pentest Limited today. Um, we did the security CTF, uh, I think, last time, and uh, I'd been waiting to, to broadcast this one uh, for it to no longer be live. They ask, you know, that you don't post any spoilers or walkthroughs uh, before uh, time, and I think time for this one was like May 21st or something. Uh, this one was kind of fun. I went down some weird rabbit holes, um, and uh, I haven't touched it since I solved it probably a month and a half ago. So there's probably going to be a little bit of uh, rediscovery as we as we work through this. Um, I'll see if I can spice things up a little bit. Um, if I just walked you through the solution, it's a pretty quick CTF. Uh, there's only a couple hops uh, to finish it. But uh, I think there's some cool stuff to explore as we do that. So um, let's just jump right in. Uh, so if you haven't, downloaded it or pulled it up or anything let's um i uh, just want to show you pentest limited's site they have a couple ctfs here uh here's the security here's the b-size edinburgh this is the one we're doing today um it looks like they've got another one coming up and i'm pretty excited about it because so far i've had fun with theirs um they're I, I won't call them super real world but they're uh you know probably more real world than some other you know more puzzle like ctfs so um so yeah, uh, as with their other one, they're super handy and give us the IP address right off the bat. So we'll go ahead and plug that into Nmap and see what we're dealing with. Uh, 47.131. So uh, let's go to our boot to root directory uh, and we'll make dir um, p sides eddy. And we'll Nmap uh, 102. Um, we'll do the um, the default scripts, all the default scripts, uh, and 192, 168, 47, 1 something, 131. And then we'll do our output in all formats to, uh, you know, besides Eddie um, as the prefix, and then it'll be like dot, you know, this gmap.nmap.xml. So, well, never seen someone stream Kali Linux. Uh, yeah, that's literally the only thing I do. <laughs> I mean, I guess I do some uh, some uh, video games from time to time, but really, it's all uh, it's all boot to roots and uh, CTFs and stuff. So, welcome to the stream, Black C10. Okay, so we've got a. Um, we've got our results here. We've got a just it looks like a web server. Um, no big deal. Uh, the robust.txt might have something interesting in it, uh, but if we remember last time, it only had one entry as well, and it wasn't super interesting. But we'll check it out. Let's get burp up. Throw up our. Uh... Oh man, guys! I just got a, a, a burp pro license at work uh, last week, and I'm super excited. I've been playing a lot with it. Um, maybe I'll do a stream on Burp Pro uh, soon once I kind of get, you know, more understanding of all the different features and how they work. Uh, but it's very cool. Uh, obviously, Burp Free is still an excellent tool, and I will continue to use it in the streams. But, uh, you know, the Pro License, man, it's so good. It's cheap, too. I keep meaning to buy it for myself for home, but, uh, it, you know, I think for these streams, it's probably better just to keep it free uh, and keep the barrier of entry low for people to follow along. So, looks like we're still doing our boot to root foxy proxy. We'll uh, turn off interception here, and then we'll just go to uh, 47131. Ah, there we go. Oh no, the, the Burp Pro license is like 300 bucks, 400 bucks maybe. Um, Yeah, it's 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 really reasonable considering how much uh, uh, you know some security software can be. Oh, they changed the website. That's kind of cool. Uh, yeah, three forty nine a year, uh, and that's if you want to re up it right and and keep up to date with versions or whatever. Honestly, in our industry, 
three hundred and fifty bucks a year is like nothing. Uh, that's, I, I mean, I know not everybody can 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 afford stuff like that, but compared to other security software, that's essentially free. Uh, I mean, if we look at uh, like Cobalt Strike, we're obviously we're getting a little bit off topic here, but you know, we look at Cobalt Strike, and I think that's over a grand. Uh, where's the Where's the monies? Uh, I I would have to go further off the rails than I want to, but I think Cobalt strikes like a few few thousand dollars uh, for a license. Whereas, you know, granted they do two very different things. Uh, it's hard to compare them, but anyways, uh, we are well off the rails now. Okay, so here we are. Uh, we've got a site. Am I a bad hacker? Um, I am bad at hacking, uh, I guess we could say that. Um, but no, I, I, uh, I'm a security professional. Uh, I work for some corporations and uh, I practice both offensive and defensive security for my company. Um, so uh, we're at this web page. We've got, uh, uh, here's our IP address. Uh, here is our user agent. Uh, so there's obviously some funky scripts going on here. Uh, and the first thing you have to think about is if a uh, website is reflecting data back to you that it gets from us, like if we can give it data and it just displays it back to us, then maybe we can do something funky with it, right? So let's, uh, let's reload this page. And wait a minute. Mm. Wait. Uh oh. <laughs> That's dumb. Okay. Uh here we go. Now I think burp is set up correctly. Yes, here we go. Okay. So we have now intercepted the uh, HTTP request. You can see it's still loading. It's waiting for the request to be forwarded to the web server. Uh, and we can kind of mess with this, right? So if we take this, the, our user agent that's being uh, uh, reflected back at us, and we just do something silly, like uh, let's do the, the stereotypical uh, cross-site scripting uh, attack here. And then we forward this. Boom. So we do see... Um, we do see that the web server is not sanitizing our input at all. Um, so we can kind of throw kind of any kind of code that it understands and it looks like it'll execute it for us, right? Uh, so here's a cross site scripting attack. Um, and when I did this originally, I probably spent uh, half an hour to an hour trying to figure out how I can leverage, uh, you know, uh, client ran script uh, into some sort of interesting attack. Um, as anybody who has any sort of experience knows, there's not really a way to do it unless, you know, there are other users of the system and we can start stealing their credentials or something. So what else do we have? Um, we also have the robots.txt, uh, so we can take a look at that. Oops, I don't need to intercept you anymore. Okay, and uh, once again, we've got this slash dev. If we recall from the security uh, boot to root, uh, it's not much of anything, right? We've got, oh, look at this. We've got this uh, index of dev, and then we've got this password here. I need to back up passwords at some point. Okay, and that may be a hint uh, that we can use later. Uh, it may be just a, um, you know, a red herring or something, or maybe it's a, a piece of code that's going to be set up for the next, um, boot to root that they're planning the next CTF on their website. I don't know. Uh, so uh, that's about it uh, here. We've got some some links that go off onto the internet, but of course on boot to roots, we really shouldn't be going off onto the internet from a victim machine or they shouldn't be taking you onto the internet. We shouldn't be doing anything offensive or uh, partially potentially dubious uh, on the public internet where uh, it could have ill effects. We want to keep it local. So that's probably not related to the hack. So 
Um, we're going to use another tool that I like called Nikto. Uh, it's a pretty noisy web scanner. I wouldn't use it for any time you need to be stealthy, uh, but it's pr you know pretty effective at least uh, doing some automated uh, baseline tests. Um, uh, baseline tests on the on the server. So. Uh, obviously, we can kind of enumerate these ourselves if we want, but, uh, you know, why if we can automate it? Again, it's super noisy. So if you're on an engagement and your, um, you know, stealth is key, you know, you want to, you want to, you're trying to test how their uh, detection capabilities are, um, then, um, you know, this, this is not something you probably want to just whip out out of the box. Uh, as you... Uh, infiltrate and get to the get to the flags that you need to get to and they haven't detected you and you start ramping up your uh, noise level to see where they start detecting you at for your report uh, then Nikto is something that you can probably start throwing at it mm. oh HTTPS I get in the habit of doing that Okay, so we've got a manager, uh, which I think we found in the security before. Um, we've got a test.html and also a test.php. So let's check out that test.php. <laughs> so the cross-site scripting popped up. And if you see here, this is all the uh, requests from Nikto. This is a lot of requests that it goes through to do its various testing. Uh, and then we also have Nmap here. So again, Nmap also pretty noisy, right? Uh, so if we see here, this test page is an access log. Uh, and this is a fairly standard thing to exist uh, on web servers, which tells you, you know, what IP address, um, what uh, user agent string, and... Um, what uh, typically what destination page though this one doesn't seem to give us our destination page um, but so yeah super noisy super noisy this is not something you want to do uh, now Nikto and Nmap and other web scanning uh, uh, tools give you the option to do um, it change your user agent and stuff um, which can help uh, you know hide in access logs and stuff so you know it's not popping up as nmap or as nikto um, but still you know just two scans all of these uh accesses right all of these uh times they hit the server so very very brute force um blexi 10 uh it's better to do cell scans it depends on what you're trying to do um it all depends on what the scope of your test is or why you're doing the test. Uh, if it's a boot to root or a, um, a uh, like CTF or something like that, noise doesn't really matter um, unless it's like a player versus player CTF, like the DEF CON CTFs or level five of Net Wars or something. Um, once you start getting into uh, like a pen test engagement or, you know, a player versus player CTF, um, it, you, you don't want to tip the the defenders off that you're doing something right at least initially uh, if you're on a pen test engagement and you don't get caught part of the value that you provide to your clients is once you get the the, the jewels or the flags or whatever you decide the target is um you can uh you know you can you document how you did it and you're like okay that's part of your part of your test but then the next thing you want to do is start evaluating their defenses so you can start giving them recommendations on how to get better and as you start to do that you can kind of ramp up the noise like little by little by little start being a little more blase as you go through the network and see if they start picking up your carelessness um because it's all about providing uh value to your clients it's all about helping them get better and help them detect uh faster and and uh you know with higher confidence levels so 